Okay, so you know how to make water textures, you know how to make ground textures, but do you know how to blend them together naturally, procedurally, using the height data of your mesh in order to tell the materials where to be? For example, here we've got the water resting on the flat surface at the bottom and the ground texture on any of the higher bumps. Now, how do we go about doing this? It's actually very, very straightforward. Well, okay, I say that, we have a mix of nodes here, but what I'm gonna do is show you the really basic theory behind it first, and then if you wanna stick around to the end to know how to actually make the water and sand textures themselves, you can do that. But first of all, we're just gonna show you how to do it. So if you know how to do your textures, go ahead, do it yourself. Firstly, we're gonna go ahead and make a plane, scale it by five. Then what we're gonna do is subdivide it a couple of times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times is probably enough. Make it smooth, go to modifiers, add modifier, add a displacement modifier, go down to texture, new, and change the type from image to clouds. Now that is way too big, so we're gonna increase the size so they look more like sand dunes, but obviously do whatever you want. The brightness is gonna change how high or low our sea level is. So the lower down we bring the brightness, the more sea level we're gonna get, and the contrast is gonna change how steep the actual land mass is. So the lower the contrast, the flatter the landscape. Change the size and just until you get something you're happy with, I want to create a sort of sand dune looking material. So I'm going to try and keep it as flat as I can with larger bumps. But if you want to create more detail, more mountainous terrain, that's up to you. We just want to make sure that there is a completely flat level at the bottom so that the water texture can stick to that. And there are some higher mounds that the sand texture can stick to. Now we need to apply the modifiers for this to work within Eevee. Let's make a new material and change it. Call it something like sand and water. Cool. We have our principled BSDF plugged into our material output. Let's just move this over here a bit. And again, this is not showing you how to make a sand or water material. We're just going to show you the concept behind it. So I'm going to change this color to be an orangey sandy color. Just for reference, we're going to duplicate this and create another principled shader. And we're going to make it blue to represent our water. Just show you what I'm doing here. Blue, increase the metallic, decrease the roughness just so we have a more reflective surface. Again, just for reference sake. Now, all we're going to do is add shader, mix shader, connect water into the top, sand into the bottom. And there you go. You, you, no, it's not done. What we need to do is separate these materials because at the moment it's either going from one to the other, they're just mixing wherever they are. It's not great. What we want to do here is essentially tell the mesh that anything on sea level is going to be the water and anything above that is going to be the sand. So we're going to go add input texture coordinate. We're going to also add a converter and add a separate XYZ node. Now this is going to be your golden node here in order to use the Z data to separate we're going to add a color ramp as well, which is going to help control what we need. Connect generated to vector, separate X, Y, Z, the Z to the factor. And then we're going to take the color output, plug that into the factor. And that's going to act as essentially the data to drive how much it's going to mix and where it's going to mix. If we bring the white value all the way down and crush it as low as we can go, there you go. That's it. You're done. Well done, everyone. You have mixed your material. You've got water at the bottom. If you want more information about how to create water textures and sand textures, go check out my other tutorials or stick around and I'll show you how to do it now. So what we're going to do is add a texture, Musgrave texture for the water. Press Control T, Vector, Bump, plug the height into the height, Normal into the Normal. Now we're gonna play around with the scale, detail, dimension, and lunaracity, lunaserati, whatever it is on the Musgrave texture, bring that strength down. And this is essentially gonna drive our water texture. Now this is up to you how big or small you want the scale of it to look. I'm kind of going for sort of a pond pool looking type material, but if you want an ocean texture, just play around with the settings until you get it right. I'm gonna bring the strength right down. There we go. Cool, I mean, that that's good enough for me, I'd say. Yeah, cool, water is done. Now, how do we make the sand? This is even simpler, actually. What we're gonna do is add a texture, noise texture, duplicate that bump node from above, plug the factor into the height, the normal into the normal, and because sand is just loads and loads of tiny dots, we're just gonna increase the scale, 
press control T so that it's using the generated UV coordinates. Increase the roughness all the way up and increase the detail. There you go. That's it. That's as easy as it needs to be to create sand. But what if we want to take it one step further? What if we want to add sort of waves of sand into this so that it's not just one flat texture? There's a really simple and easy way to do this. All we need to do is add texture, wave texture, pop that above there. And we're also going to add a, we're going to connect the vector to the vector, add a color, mix RGB, connect the factor from the noise texture and the factor from the wave texture into that, color from the output of the mix into the height. And as you can see, we've got a sort of wave texture in there, but it's way too uniform. It's way too straight. Even if we play around with the scale and even the distortion, it's way too uniform. We want it to actually flow with the height of the terrain. So all we do is change bands to rings, and there we go. You'll see that the wave texture is using the geometry of the height in order to create this really nice, very realistic looking flow of waves that actually look like they're embedded into the terrain. If we just change the, the amount that's being mixed there and the scale of it, blend it together really subtly it is looking really really cool and that's it that is how you well a blend the materials together using that separate xyz node for the factor of the mix on your two main materials that is how you're going to get that base level material sitting on the ground and then your ground texture slightly high above and then a little bit of info on the sand and water. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe for more content. That's it and I'll see you all in the next video.